powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the Noon News from Montana's News Leader. Good afternoon and thanks so much for joining us today. I'm Asia Gore. President Trump is shaking up his cabinet again. He announced with a tweet late Wednesday, David Shulkin is out as Secretary of Veterans Affairs and he's already picked his White House doctor for the job. CBS's Hannah Doba has more. David Shulkin has been fired after weeks of speculation. The president wanted a change at the VA, but he's not going quietly. In a New York Times op-ed, Shulkin argued he was being pushed out by people who want to put VA health care in the hands of the private sector. They saw me as an obstacle to privatization who had to be removed. Shulkin also defended himself on NPR. I was not against um, uh, reforming VA, but I was against privatization, and I think that it was really the political appointees that were trying to undermine our efforts at VA. The White House responded, saying this administration has taken several unprecedented steps to transform and modernize the VA, and there are no discussions about privatizing it. The president has nominated his physician at the White House, Rear Admiral Ronnie Jackson, to replace Chalkin as head of the VA. This is a man who, as a doctor, understands medicine, as an active duty member, uh, understands the military. Jackson vigorously defended President Trump's health after his physical earlier this year. I told the president that if he had a healthier diet over the last uh, 20 years, he might live to be 200 years old. I don't know. I mean, um, he uh, he has incredible uh, he has incredible genes, I just assume. The Senate will have to confirm Jackson and his hearings may be tough. Some lawmakers are already pointing to the doctor's lack of experience running any large organization. Hannah Doba, CBS News, the White House. The VA is the government's second largest agency with a budget of $186 billion and more than 9 million patients. Meanwhile, White House Communications Director Hope Hicks leaves the West Wing today after announcing her resignation last month. Prosecutors say top Trump campaign official Rick Gates spoke repeatedly with a person he knew was a former Russian intelligence officer. Gates and the former intelligence official exchanged phone calls as late as October of 2016. Prosecutors say the officer still had active connections in Russia's spy network. Gates was the Trump campaign's liaison to the Republican National Committee at that time. Gates is expected to testify against former campaign manager Paul Manafort at trial in July. But the New York Times reports Manafort expects to receive a pardon from President Trump if he is convicted. Montana transportation leaders celebrate today as we mark 30 days without a fatal crash in the state. According to an MDT press release, the last fatal crash in Montana was February 26th. The average number of fatal crashes in 2012 to 2016 was down 8% from the previous five-year period, and the number of serious injury crashes fell by 14%. State leaders say this is a good sign that Vision Zero is working. That initiative, launched in 2014, aims to reduce Montana roadway fatalities and serious injury crashes to zero. But MDT did warn we are approaching the deadliest months on Montana roads June through August and advised drivers to stay vigilant. The suspect in the 2013 murders of two people in Frenchtown now accused of trying to pay someone to kill a witness. 52-year-old Caressa Hardy now charged with two counts of solicitation to commit deliberate homicide. Hardy is already accused of killing two of her three roommates. These new charges stem from an attempt to kill off the third roommate, who was a witness to the two murders. According to court documents, Hardy offered money to two separate inmates to carry out the murder. An inmate reported that Hardy said she shouldn't have let the witness go. The remains of the two victims were never found. Yellowstone County prosecutors will not charge a Billings man with murder for a fatal shooting in 2015. Prosecutors said in a memo to the Billings Police Department, that the apparent victim in this case was actually the aggressor. Nicholas Franson allegedly admitted he shot and killed 42-year-old Sean Allred. The two men fought over text message the night of the shooting because Franson apparently owed a drug debt. The memo states later that night, Allred entered Franson's home on North 24th Street without permission. Franson claims Allred cornered him and pulled out a gun before Franson shot him about 20 times. Prosecutors believe a jury could reasonably find Franson acted in self-defense. A district court judge in Helena says author John Krakauer will get access to the university documents concerning the high-profile rape case on the University of Montana campus five years ago. 
However, Krakauer will receive a redacted version to protect students involved in this investigation. Krakauer has fought several years to access the full records. He maintains there are still unanswered questions about how UM leadership handled the investigation and eventual expulsion that preceded the rape trial and acquittal of UM quarterback Jordan Johnson. The judge ruled the document should be released to Krakauer by May 23rd. However, the state may appeal the ruling, sending it back to the Montana Supreme Court. We now know the name of a whitefish man who died in Hawaii Tuesday after he saved his daughter in the ocean. Maui police identified 46-year-old Brian Lazorishak as the victim. It happened on the Olvine Pools on Maui. Authorities say the 15-year-old girl was standing near the water's edge when a large wave washed her into the ocean. That's when Lazorishak jumped into the water and brought his daughter back to the rocky cliff. Bystanders used towels as a makeshift rope and pulled the girl up to the ledge to safety. But when they looked back for the man, he was floating face down. His body was recovered, but he could not be revived. Montana's devastating fire season may have cost the state close to a quarter of a billion dollars in lost tourism revenue. New research from the University of Montana released its findings this week. Researchers say 12 and a half million tourists spent nearly $3.4 billion visiting the Treasure State. About half of those visitors came between July and August. But last year, those months also marked the height of our fire season. Economist and Associate Research Director Jeremy Sage says Montana may have lost up to $240 million because visitors changed their plans due to the fire and smoke. In December, the Institute estimated Montana lost up to 800,000 visitors due to the fire season, even though overall visits were actually up 1% in 2017. We turn now to the weather season with the weather forecast and from fire season to kind of the cold slushy stuff we got today. How are we that's looking at right. we, we And that's exactly where we're at too, Asia. We're watching this band of snow showers that's been moving across the central portion of the state. And you can basically follow that line that's moving across the region from around Great Falls, Billings, down towards Sheridan, Wyoming, and it produced a band of fairly good snow through the morning hours and a rain snow mix in some cases. Here's a look just north of Billings in Yellowstone County. Some of the snow from early in the day. Uh, we haven't seen that kind of fresh snow for a while. It was the wet heavy flakes. The sun started to break through about midday. Thanks, Carolyn, for this picture that was just up around the Billings Airport. Then also, as we take a look out towards the Montana-Wyoming line on I-90, you can see some of the conditions are still a little dicey there. Back with a look at the forecast coming up in a few minutes. It's always a weather se season and a cold one at that. Thanks, Ed. We'll check back in. The Bullock administration now taking action to avoid further cuts in several human service programs. Governor Bullock telling state lawmakers he may need an additional $23 million in spending authority this year. The governor made the request earlier this month for what's known as supplemental funding. That means he'll transfer the money from next budget year to this year to avoid further cuts now and then ask the legislature to give retroactive approval in 2019. The money will pay for higher Medicaid caseloads, nurses and psychiatrists at the state hospital in Warm Springs and more workers to investigate child abuse and neglect. The request also includes money to pay for cost overruns at the Office of the Public Defender. State lawmakers will discuss the proposal further in May. Still ahead on the new news, the mystery deepens after a California family is found dead over the edge of a cliff. Details when we come back. But first, Ed has our full weather forecast. Stay with us. You're watching MTN News with Asia Gore, Storm Trekker Weather with Ed McIntosh, and Farm and Ranch News from the Northern Egg Network. This is the new